Hi, I'm Edie Ekman, the designer of the Rugby Baby Sweater from Appalachian Baby Design. In this video, I'll take you through the steps of knitting this sweater. For information on how to get the written pattern and full instructions, check the notes in the video description. I'm using Appalachian Baby Design U.S. Organic Cotton, two balls of my main color, and one ball of a contrasting color. They have lots of pretty colors to choose from. I'm using a US size six, four millimeter knitting needle to get the pattern gauge for the main part of the sweater. I'll need both a 16 inch circular and a set of double pointed needles in this size. I'll also need a set of 16 inch circular and a set of double pointed needles in a size 3.5 millimeter for the garter stitch bands. If you prefer, you can use a 32 inch long or longer circular needle in the magic loop method to work in the round on a small circumference if you already know how to do it using this technique. Other notions you'll need include stitch markers, one of which needs to be in a unique color, and some waste yarn to act as stitch holders. You'll have three buttons and needle and thread to match your yarn as well. Let's talk about gauge for a few minutes. Matching the pattern gauge is really important. If you don't know how to do that, take a few minutes to watch my video about measuring gauge in stockinette stitch. With the smaller circular needles and my main color, I'm going to work a long tail cast on using 75 stitches or however many stitches you need. If you want more information on how to do a long tail cast on, you can watch my video on long tail cast ons for both right and left handed knitters. That was the first two cast on stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and cast on 75 stitches and I want to do it fairly loosely. Once I've cast on stitches according to my pattern, I'm going to turn and knit a row. Let me show you a little something about this cast on. I did a long tail cast on and if you look at this, you'll see that this is a smooth edge. When I turn, I end up with a bumpy edge. That's the wrong side of my cast on. So my first knit row is a wrong side row. I wanna make sure I get my yarn tail out of the way here and I will just knit across all of these stitches. I finished one row that was a wrong side row and I'm going to put a marker just in the front here to show that this is the right side because when I'm working garter stitch it can be kind of tricky to see which is the right side. So now I have marked the right side. My instructions tell me to knit seven rows. So I've knit one row, I'm going to knit six more rows. I have finished my neckband and I want to show you that I have four garter stitch ridges. It takes two knit rows to make one garter stitch ridge. So my first ridge was worked when I did that first wrong side row, I came up with one ridge. Then I had two more rows here for the second ridge, two more here for the third ridge, and two more here for the fourth ridge. And I'm back ready to work a right side row. Now I'm going to start with my larger needles. The, the larger needles are the needles I used to get gauge. My instructions tell me to knit eight. And those are sleeve stitches. You can knit eight, nine, or 10, depending on your size, two, four, six, eight, and place a marker. Now I'm going to knit the next section, which is gonna be my back stitches, place another marker, then I'll knit the sleeve stitches, again, more sleeve stitches, and this is eight, nine, or 10, place a marker, and then I should have 30 front stitches remaining. So there I am, I knit all the stitches onto my larger, circular needle, but I'm still not going to join. I'm going to keep working back and forth now. Row two tells me to purl to the last two stitches and then knit two. 
I have purled all the way to the last two stitches and then I'm going to knit the last two stitches and turn. Now is when we start the fun row and that is one of the increase rows that we're going to do for the raglan shaping. So I'm on a right side row and I'm going to knit front and back in the first stitch. To do that I knit in the front of the stitch, pull it through, but then don't take that stitch off the needle. Instead I go around to the back and knit into the back of the stitch. So knit front and back. And then knit to one stitch before the marker. That means I'm knitting until there's one stitch on the left needle before I get to the marker. Here I am one stitch before the marker. I'm going to knit front and back again. Slip my marker and to do that I can just slip it off like that from one needle to the next. Knit front and back in the next stitch. And then I'm going to do that whole section three times. Here I am at the second marker. Knit front and back. Slip marker. Knit front and back again. So I've done that section now three times and I'll knit to the last two stitches. In other words, knit until two stitches remain on my left needle. Two stitches left on my needle. Knit front and back. And then knit one and I have increased a total of eight stitches across that row. So I increased two stitches at each marker, one stitch at the beginning of the row and one stitch at the end of the row. I'm going to repeat rows two and three five more times. As you work the increase rows, you'll notice that the knit front and back increases create a little bar, a little horizontal bar, on either side of a center stitch. This helps you keep track of how many increases you've made. So at this point you can see I have made one, two, three increase rows. So as you're counting, you can count how many rows you've done. At the end of row 13, after I've done those increases, I have a total of 123 or under 2731 stitches. And I want to stop and count and make sure I have the right number of stitches in each section. So this is my left sleeve stitch, my back, my right sleeve stitches, and then my front stitches. Row 14 is a wrong side row and because it is a purl row, it tells me when it tells me to purl, bind off one, I'm going to bind off one purl wise, meaning I purl those first two stitches, bind off the one stitch, and then complete purling all the way to the last two stitches and knit two just as I've been doing. So far we've been knitting back and forth because we wanted to keep create an opening for the neck a little bit of a larger opening than just the, the circular neck, but now we're going to join and start working in the round. Round 15 is a right side round and it begins with a knit front and back, which should feel familiar to you. Knit to one stitch before marker, knit front and back, and so on, just as we've been doing. The difference is going to be what happens at the end of this round. At the end of round 15, I knit front and back in the last stitch, 
but then I don't turn because this is going to be the round where we join and keep working in the round. So we'll be knitting from here on out. I'm going to use a marker in a different color than the others to mark the beginning and end of the round here. So now I've placed my marker in a unique color and I'm not going to turn. The next round I'll just knit all the way around. So I'm going directly from the end of round 15 to the beginning of round 16 by just knitting across that gap. Might give a little tug right there to make sure that first stitch is snug and then just knit all the way around. When you were working back and forth, you were increasing at the markers and at the beginning and the end of the row, every other row. Now we're going to be doing that every other round. So on round 16, I had done a plain knit row, but round 17 is going to be another increase row. It's going to be just like you did it before. So after my beginning of the round marker, I'm going to do a knit front and back in that first stitch. Then I'll knit to the next marker and increase on either side of it and do that all the way around until I get back to the end of the round where I'll do an increase in the very last stitch of the round. Repeat those last two rounds, so a plain row and then an increase row, according to your pattern. When you get to the total number of stitches, also stop and count to make sure that you have the right number of stitches in each section. So your front, your back, and your sleeves all have the number of stitches that the pattern says. So to begin this division round, I'm going to knit across the sleeve stitches to the first marker. Once I've knit across the sleeve stitches, I'm going to put those sleeve stitches on a holder. I like to use a piece of thin cotton. This is crochet thread. You can use thread, you can use a smooth yarn. I like the cotton because it's not fuzzy and it makes it easier for me to uh, make sure I'm not leaving little bits of yarn in here. And then I've threaded it with a tapestry needle. So I'm just going to slip the stitches off onto my holder. And since I'm really right-handed and I'm finding that kind of difficult to do, I can turn it around. It's a little bit easier for me to do from the wrong side. So there are all the stitches on the holder. The nice thing about using thread for a holder is that I can just tie these two ends together with an overhand knot and those stitches won't be going anywhere. I'll turn this back around. Remove my marker because I don't need that marker anymore and then knit across the back stitches. After knitting the back stitches, I'll remove that marker and put the next sleeve stitches on a holder. So I haven't knit these sleeve stitches. I'm just going to put them on a second holder, so a second strand of yarn using my tapestry needle. So take off those stitches. Put them on a holder. I will tie a knot here. Now I need to cast on stitches 
to bridge the gap. There's the sleeve and that's what it's going to look like, but I want a few stitches on the underarm. So I'm going to do a backwards loop cast on just by taking the yarn, making a, a loop and putting it on the right needle. I'm going to do that a total of four times. Now I'm going to remove this marker. I don't need those raglan markers anymore and knit across the front stitches. So you see I'm drawing that together and that creates my sleeve opening. Coming to the end of the front stitches, I'll remove my marker. That was the beginning of the round marker here. It had gotten those were on them older there. So there's the beginning of the round marker that I'm going to take off and I need to bridge the gap over these sleeves that I've already put on a holder. So I'm going to do a backwards loop cast on four more stitches. And then place that marker to show the beginning of my round is now at this point. So there is the yoke of my sweater. You can see the, the front neck opening and the two sleeves. And now we're ready to start on the lower body. In this section, I'm just going to continue working in the round and knit two more rounds. When you get to the cast on stitches at the underarm, just be careful to knit into each of those four cast on stitches. When I finished the two rounds in my main color, I'm going to leave at least a four inch tail, cut the yarn, and add my contrasting color. And I'm going to leave at least a four inch tail, maybe a six inch tail and begin knitting. And I will weave these ends later. So there will be a little bit of a gap where I started the new color, but that's okay. I don't tie a knot at this point. Nothing's going to happen there. We'll just weave in the ends later. This section is just knitting round and round until you have the number of rounds you need in the contrasting color for your size. Once you finish that contrasting color band, change back to the main color and work round and round until you get the length from the underarm that the pattern says. Then do that body band, the lower band, changing to smaller needles and knitting around and purling around until you have four garter stitch ridges. That's eight rounds and then bind off. And you're going to bind off knitwise, meaning you knit two stitches, then lift that stitch over. Don't bind off too tightly. Knit the next stitch and lift the stitch over. Do that all the way around until you have one stitch left and then fasten off that last stitch. It's starting to look like a sweater. We have the body all done and now it's time to do the sleeve. The first sleeve we're going to do is the left sleeve. Now sleeves are named according to the way they're worn. So if you think about this as being the front of the sweater, this would be the left, left sleeve. So sometimes I, instead of looking at it from the front, I turn it around and think, okay, if I'm wearing it, this is my left arm, so that's the left sleeve. So far, we've been working in the round using our 16 inch length needle. But now that we have this small circumference to do for the sleeve, we're going to have to use double pointed needles. If you know how to use the magic loop method, you can use a longer circular needle for this, but I'm going to show you how to use the double pointed needles and in this case I'm using four double pointed needles. The first thing I do is I put the sleeve stitches from my left sleeve onto my larger double pointed needle. So this is where I can take out my stitch marker 
or this is where I can take out my stitch holder but I'm not even going to take it out just yet instead I'm going to use it to help me get these stitches up on the needles so I can just kind of slide the point of this needle in right along where my stitch holder my waist yarn stitch holder is and once I get some of those stitches on there I'll pull my stitch holder out so there are a few I want to put this more or less evenly distributed on three needles and because I'm doing the smallest size I have 36 stitches total 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 so I'm going to put 12 stitches on each of my needles and look at that I can just slide those off and put these back on here very carefully This last, these last couple of stitches may look a little tight through here and you can use your stitch holder to pull those stitches up so you can get them up onto your needle. You may have a different number of stitches because you're doing a different size and that's fine. Just put about a third of the stitches on each needle. So now I have them evenly distributed among the needles and I'm going to take my main color yarn and my fourth needle and begin at the center of the underarm remember we had those cast on stitches right here at the center of the underarm I'm going to start right there and pick up and knit two stitches from these cast on stitches so I'll just stick my needle straight through one of those cast on stitches I'm going to go under two loops there leaving at least a four inch tail wrap the yarn around and pick up and knit so that's one stitch and now I'm going to go into another make sure I've got my working yarn not my yarn tail get that out of the way and pick up and knit another stitch onto my fourth needle and I'm having a little trouble with that let's try that again there we go so I have my I picked up and knit these two stitches from the cast on body stitches now I'm going to knit to the end of the round and what that means when I'm working in the round on double pointed needles is I'll knit across all the stitches on the first needle. When I finish with the stitches on the first needle, I have a free needle. That needle becomes my working needle. I'll sort of shift things around a little bit and knit all the stitches off the next needle. So the yarn just goes from the first needle to the next needle and I'm bringing the yarn around back and the new needle my new working needle is behind the first needle that I worked on to and sometimes you want to give a little tug on that first or second stitch to keep there from being a gap that's something you'll get used to as you work in the round on double pointed needles work across those stitches now my free needle becomes my working needle and I work across the next set of stitches on the last needle So I've worked to the end of the round, but I'm not quite finished yet. We still have a gap here. Remember I started working my round in the center of the underarm, and now I need to knit some stitches to get back to the center of the underarm. I'm going to pick up and knit 
three stitches in this space right here. I had a total of four cast on stitches. I'm actually picking up five stitches from the four stitches. I'm going to put one right here, pick up and knit one. two, three. And I think I want those stitches to be on this last needle here. So I'm going to slide those three stitches onto the last needle there so that I have a free needle. So now I have set up for working in the round. I have all the stitches, all the sleeve stitches, including those underarm stitches on my three double pointed needles and I'm going to continue working in the round. I want to put a stitch marker here to remind myself the, where the beginning of the round is. However, I don't want to put the stitch marker on the needle because I'm working in the round and the beginning of the round is between needles. It'll fall off. I'm just going to put that marker right here within the work, but that kind of helps me remember that that's where the center of the underarm is. Now my instructions say to knit one more round in my main collar. Take a few minutes to read through all the shaping instructions for the sleeve before continuing. The next round is a decrease round and we're going to be adding the contrasting color and decreasing on this round. You're going to knit a certain number of rounds, the same number of rounds in the contrasting color that you did for the body, but at the same time you're going to be working decrease rounds as instructed in the pattern. So you'll have to keep up with how many rounds you've done between decrease rounds and how many total rounds of the contrasting color you have. Then you will change to the main color for the remainder of the rounds as you continue to decrease. For the decrease round, with the contrasting color, I'm going to leave a nice long tail, knit one, then slip, slip, knit. The SSK decrease is slip one knitwise, slip the next stitch knitwise, then insert your left needle through both stitches together and knit them together through the back loops. You can see that's the back loop of the stitch. Then I'll knit around to the last three stitches of the round. The last three stitches are knit two together and then knit one. I've decreased a total of two stitches, one at the beginning and one at the end of the round. Now I'll just knit even for several rounds according to my pattern and then do another decrease round. At the same time, when I have completed all of the contrasting color rounds, I'm going to change to my main color and knit in the main color through the rest of the sleeve. Continue following the instructions for the sleeve till you get down to the band. I've worked all my sleeve decreases and worked even for a while and I need to stop and measure I measure from the bottom of my needle, so not the stitches on my needle, but just measuring here from the bottom of my needle, I need my sleeve to be six and three quarters inches long. And that's about right. I remember that my cast on started with a couple of rows of the uh, main color. So I think I'm right at six and three quarters inches long. And I am ready to change to my smaller double point needles. Now that doesn't mean that I need to slip the stitches onto the needle. I can just knit onto the smaller needles. Now, these were the size that I used for my body. This is the size that I'm using for my garter stitch bands, just like I started with the smaller, band, smaller needles on the other bands. These also happen to be shorter, and I'm just using these shorter ones so you can tell the difference. It tells me to work as for the body band. When you look at the instructions for the body band, it says knit one round. I'm knitting this round with the smaller needles. So as I finish 
one larger needle. I'll set that aside and pick up my smaller size needle. I've knit my one round. I've changed to my smaller double point needles all the way around. Then I'm going to continue working as for the body band by doing my garter stitch in the round. So purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, and so on. Until I have four ridges, then I'll bind off. When you finished the left sleeve, it's time to come back and work on the right sleeve. And for the right sleeve, you're going to come back with the larger double point needles, pick up the stitches just as you did for the left sleeve. So you'll pick up the stitches, the underarm stitches, work around and pick up some more underarm stitches, but then knit two rounds. After you picked up and knit the first round on the left sleeve, you knit one plain round, but you're going to knit two plain rounds now. And that is because you were, you had knit one row shorter on this sleeve. So using the larger needles, pick up and knit that first round, getting all the stitches arranged on your needles, then knit two more rounds, then beginning at the double asterisks, work the right sleeve just as you did for the left sleeve, remembering to do the decreases and to put that darker stripe in there. The last thing you're going to knit is the front placket here. This is where we're going to put our buttonhole band. And I like to put a marker at the halfway point so I know how to pick up stitches, how to pick up stitches evenly. So I'm just folding that opening in half and putting it, putting a marker there. So I know I'll pick up eight stitches to the marker and then eight stitches along um, the second half. Beginning with my contrasting color yarn, I'm just going to start down here at the bottom and stick my needle in. I'm using my smaller needles, and these are my double points, but I could be using my circular needle if I want to. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around and pull it through. And it's a little bit tight. I might I have a crochet hook here. I might decide that it's going to be a little bit easier to do that work with a with a crochet hook, but we'll see. Go straight through there under two loops and make sure I'm not splitting this yarn. It's a little bit challenging sometimes. And I'm going right up all the way to the very edge here. And this first stitch is really loose because that's where my yarn tail is. So I'll check my stitch count. have 16 stitches. Turn and knit to the last stitch, then slip one stitch purlwise with yarn in front. Knit to the last stitch, slip one stitch purlwise with yarn in front. That means I need to bring the yarn to the front and then slip that stitch. And since it's so very loose, need to pull on that yarn tail. Row two is a right side row and it's our buttonhole row. So on this row, I'm going to knit two. Then yarn over and knit two together. 
So I'm increasing with the yarn over, but then I'm decreasing right away with the knit two together. So I maintain the same number of stitches. Then knit three. Yarn over, knit two together. That's our second buttonhole. And then do that again, knit three. Yarn over, knit two together. Knit one, slip one purlwise with yarn in front. Then knit three rows. Rows three, four, and five are all knit to the last stitch. Slip one purlwise with yarn in front. You can see the three buttonholes here and it's time to bind off knitwise. I'm going to finish this last stitch before but before I end off and fasten off I want to check something. First, I'm going to pull on this yarn tail to bring that down. I need to weave in some ends here. I've got some loose ends. That's why I have a little hole right here. But the thing I want to check is to make sure that that is going to lie flat and that I'm happy with the way that looks. 16 stitches was the right number for me, but if your row gauge was a little different or your stitch gauge was a little different, you just want to check this and make sure that it's going to lie flat and look pretty. After all, that is the front of the sweater and you want it to look good. I'm actually okay with that, so I'm going to cut my yarn, leave a nice long tail, and fasten off the end. Now we have a good many yarn tails to weave in. I've got a yarn tail to weave in here because you can see I have a loose stitch, but I also have a loose stitch here and lots of places where we changed color. For the regular weaving in of ends, you want to work in a couple of different directions. If you can, here you can see I've worked diagonally into the dark green. You might work up and down like this, but that might not be quite enough. You may want to work back in the other direction or work diagonally down into the color um, of the, the same color yarn. Now one place you really will have a hole is at the underarm. And I've left this hole here for you so you can see what's going on. I wove in the ends where I changed colors on the sleeve, but this is what's left over from when I picked up the stitches, where I had the cast on stitches and I picked up the stitches at the underarm. You will have a hole there. I'm going to bring those ends to the right side because after all, this is the side that needs to look good. And I'm going to use one of those yarn tails to sew it up from the right side and see if I can make it look a little bit better. So I can come in here and see what my stitch looks like, that V stitch. And if I work around here and go back into the same spot and come back over here, I'm basically duplicate stitching across that space and see if I can get it to look a little bit better. That, that's looking a lot better to me. And I'll do the same thing with this and use the right side facing. Maybe I don't want that little bit of stretched out hole here. I'm trying not to split the yarn. I'm working right around the yarn strands. And then maybe I'll do the same thing over here where it's a little bit stretched out. It would have been nice to have a little bit more yarn tail. I could have left a little bit long. But now I'm pretty happy with that. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Now I can go in and weave in these yarn tails in different directions, working diagonally 
up and down, back and forth, so they won't come out. Sew the buttons on the front opposite the buttonholes, and you're all set to go. Enjoy your Appalachian Baby Design Rugby Baby Sweater. If you'd like more instruction like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out the links in the video notes for other ways you can find me. Thanks for watching.